Hey Church, it's Vision Offering Week and uh, we're in the middle of the Own It series and uh, I'm going to bring you this morning's devotional. My name's John Bracegirdle. So the scripture for the Own It series is Proverbs 11.24. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. And I wanted to talk to us this morning about sowing. And um, do you know what I love about this year's Vision Offering? It's the fact that we... Um, we need a breakthrough in our building project and instead of trying to solve that ourselves by going out and having another offering and and asking the church to donate into our building project we're actually believing and we've decided as a church to to sow into other people's church projects be the answer to their prayers and uh, by doing that we're just believing that god will bring the breakthrough that we need uh, with our building project. So, Hebrews 13, 16 says, And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. You know, when we come to sowing, there's always a sacrifice. There has to be. And I'm reminded of the story of Job. And um, if you know the story, there's a whole book um, right in the middle of the Bible, devoted to, to a, a guy called Job. And he, he was tested by God. He was the, the wealthiest man in the East. Um, he had um, seven sons, three daughters, and uh, he was tested. He, he lost everything. Um, his children were all killed. And to cap it all off, he was struck with sores from his head to toe, and he was in severe pain discomfort even his wife said to him why don't you curse God and die and uh, obviously she was uh, still in shock from from losing her children so we'll we'll forgive her for that that moment of madness but three of Job's friends came to see him and they uh, they really just heaped more grief on him to be honest what was so impressive about Job, Job in that time is that he never he never blamed God and he kept faithful to God. Uh, even though he'd lost everything, he was in severe pain. Um, the, the dialogue goes on in the book of Job and eventually God shows up. And um, he asked Job in chapter 42, verse 7, to, to pray for his friends because they had not spoken right of God. He asked Job to sow into, into the, his three th friends in prayer and in intercession, um, even though Job was the one that was in need, and um, and even though that, that his friends had, had not really been any help to him. I like to imagine what Job was thinking at that point. I know what I would have been thinking. It, I would have been, God, it's, it's me who's lost everything. I've, I've lost all my money, all my wealth. My children have died. I'm, I'm covered in sores. It's, I think you've got it wrong. I think it, they should be praying for me. I need prayer, not them. But God knew the power of sowing. And, uh, you know, I, I think about that in, 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 in our building. It's, we need the breakthrough in our building. We're the ones in the spiritual battle trying to, to build the new cathedral. We're the ones that have, have we've had trials with, with the adjacent developer. We need prayer for our building. We need breakthrough through. So we could have the attitude, let's not sow into others. Let's, let's keep the vision offering for, that, for ourselves because we need it more than anyone else. But what did Job do? He was, he was obedient to God. God told him to build a sacrifice. And the Lord, the Bible says that the Lord accepted Job's prayer. Job's prayer. Wow. What happened to Job was amazing. When he, um, after he prayed that prayer, God's blessings flowed and overflowed because of Job's obedience. And um, I, wa I want us to really just read what happened to Job. And it's in Job 42, verse 10 to 26. And the Bible says that after Job had, pre Job had prayed for, all, for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him at his house. 
They comforted and consoled him over all the trouble the Lord brought on him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter parts of Job's life with more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughters he named Jer Jer Jemima, the second Keziah and the third Keren Hapuk. Nowhere in the land were they found women as beautiful as Job's daughters and their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. Wow. God was so good to Job and, and overflowed him with blessing twice as much as he had before. It was actually a double portion. He also gave him another family and Job was able to bless all of them. And God's blessing overflowed in his life. The lessons we learn from Job is that as we sacrifice, as we sow into this vision offering this month, we believe that the Lord will accept our prayers. And that blessing that the Lord bestowed upon Job is actually a promise for each and every one of us. And uh, it's just us positioning ourselves um, to receive that blessing from God. Luke 6, 38 says, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use it, it will be measured unto you. I'm excited about sowing this month. The testimonies are just going to be significant. And, you know, God's cathedral will be built. Remember, God wants to bless you. Sow into others. Position yourself to receive God's blessing in your life so you can then sow again into other people's life. I just love the picture of giving and receiving. It's an ebb and flow of God's goodness. And it just helps us appreciate how just great our God is. I hope you have a blessed day today, church, and thanks for reading. I'll see you soon.